Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This begins segment two of episode five. This segment will contain some frequently asked questions, but first, we have some language work to do based on the video clip we saw in segment one. You can watch that clip by going to the episode five page on our website, letscreate.org. A quick note to teachers, as content-based instruction, this gives you a chance to teach a very undertaught topic that should be part of social studies curriculum. It's tragic that students are taught so little about the labor movement when this complex history has affected so many people in our country and in the world. Well, labor history is complex, and so is the cause-effect relationship we're describing today. We'll use English in a way that communicates a cause-effect relationship while avoiding being simplistic. This is an example of what's called multiple causation, meaning there's more than one cause. Partial collapse of the economy, 12-hour work days, dangerous working conditions, and 10% cut in pay. These are all causes of the Great Railroad Strike of 1877. The effects associated with these causes are also not simple. Railroads workers went on strike. Strikes spread across the country. There was disruption of transportation and violence by some railroads and some workers, as well as destruction of property. When we use the term effects, we're referring to the effects of our cause list. Let's look again at the causes of the 1877 strike. There was a partial collapse of the economy, 12-hour work days were required, dangerous working conditions, and pay was cut by 10%. Now let's look again at the effects of those causes. As we can see, workers went on strike, strikes spread across the country, transportation was disrupted, and there was violence by some of the railroad companies and some workers, and property was also destroyed. Now we carefully join some causes with effects, being sure to communicate that this is no simple cause-effect relationship. So let's take a look at what's on the screen. The Great Railroad Strike of 1877 occurred because of a number of factors. The strike was touched off due to a cut in wages. So because of and due to, those are the conjunctions that put that cause and effect together for railroad workers. However, there were other conditions that contributed to the strike. Those included the partial collapse of the economy, long work days, and dangerous working conditions. Notice we didn't list all the other effects. We could do that depending on how detailed we wanted to be. So let's look at some added effects here. We could add that strikes spread across the country, transportation was disrupted, and there was violence and destruction. No cause-effect conjunctions are needed doing it this way, since we already established a cause-effect relationship in the earlier sentences. So, let's take a look. Let's get back to the effects springing from the conditions that caused the strike in the first place. The magic words to remember in joining statements of cause and effect are these, because of and due to. Use this way, the effect is listed first, then the conjunction, and then the cause. Let's look again at how we use this formula to communicate the cause-effect relationship and the complexity of the subject matter. The Great Railroad Strike of 1877 occurred because of a number of factors. The strike was touched off due to a cut in wages for railroad workers. However, there were other conditions that contributed to the strike. This included the partial collapse of the economy, long work days, and dangerous working conditions. For homework, think of some simple cause-effect relationships and join the effects with the causes using those words, because of and due to. You may find that you can drop the word of from the word because, but use both words due to when you're using that one. An example may be, I was late for work due to heavy traffic. The effects of the Great Railroad Strike of 1877, as well as other effects, became causes of other changes, such as better union organization, pressure to improve working conditions, increase in union membership, and public awareness of labor issues. 
Thus the effects of our first cause now become the causes of a list of other effects. Well, as I said before, complex issues have complex cause-effects relationships. This leaves us with a little time to address some FAQs, some frequently asked questions. So question, is ramping up your English designed for Spanish speakers? Well, it's designed for English language learners from all language backgrounds. So you don't have to speak Spanish to benefit from the program. Now, I sometimes use Spanish as examples, especially for cognates, since Spanish is my second language. Another question, why did the video clip in episode four have a title that said Adventures in English? Well, that is a good question. See, I had planned to name this program Adventures in English until I learned there's a BBC program of that name. I had already produced the video clip before the final name was chosen, Ramping Up Your English. I'll have more FAQs in future programs. You can post questions on my blog at my website, letscreate.org, and I would love to hear from you. Well, that wraps up segment two of episode five. I'll be back with segment three right after this. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. If you want to go back in time to the very birth of trains and railroads, you want to read the book The History of Railways by Colin Heinsen from Scholastic Books. The book's format reminds me of eyewitness books with small illustrations and ample text. English learners will find that the text is very challenging and there's a lot of text on each page. The illustrations are clear, providing the context to help readers decipher the text. Historical photos depict important events like the Golden Spike Ceremony that joined the Union Pacific and the Central Pacific Railroads as America's first intercontinental railroad. There's a great amount of information in the history of railways. Readers will stretch their English reading skills, but you'll also be re rewarded by a deeper knowledge of trains and railroads. Meanwhile, you'll be ramping up your English proficiency especially in reading. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts.